Okay, so we had, um, we just came out of executive session and the board, the only thing the board has to report is that we met with um, an employee who has resigned their position um, in executive session. So um, Liz, is Mark gonna be on? I believe so, Dan, do you know? Denise, I think we wanted to add that we did an exit interview with that person. Well, that's basically what I said, but I didn't call it an exit interview, but that's, that's what we did. So I guess we will wait a couple of minutes, um, call the meeting to order at seven, what is it, 703, Katie? Regular session? Yep. And is there public comment for items not on the agenda? And additions or changes to the agenda? Liz, did, we, did you want to add anything to the ECCT? Um, thank you. I believe, um, did Mark send the additional resolution for drug-free workplace? Yes. 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 Okay. That was the only other thing, um, but I can just briefly address all of them when we get to that. And that's on the, that's on the agenda already. Okay. Yeah, I think it was just an oversight in the emails. Cliff, is Mark trying to sign on by any chance? Not yet. I wonder if he's having internet problems. Is there anything we can do while we wait? Um, I'm just calling his house right now. Um, Liz, do you want to just give an update of where things are at? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Thank you all for taking time um, for this. I know it's budget season, so it's a lot. Um, so the basically the BCDP grant process gets kicked off with you all passing a resolution that approves it. Let's the, that's the community development program know that you approve applying for the grant. And then that triggers a whole bunch of requirements that flow through the state from the federal U.S. Department of HUD. So that's what you're seeing tonight are a group of documents that are all tie up to the federal regulations that the state has to make sure all municipalities agree to when they apply for community development funds. So that's just an overview. And so the initial document is the um, resolution to apply for the funds. And then along with that, comes um, an anti-displacement resolution, which essentially only kicks in when you're gonna actually convert a, how, a lower in, or moderate income housing unit or take it away off the market. So I'm sorry, what, what Denise, I got ahead. Um, what Denise has up is, or I'm sorry, what you all have up on your screen is that is the resolution itself. And single applicant just means that you're applying as just East Calais, um, as just the town of Calais, not like you're not joining with like Woodbury and Adamant and other towns. That's called a consortium application and that's different. So this just lays out that you meet uh, these requirements. You have a municipal plan. Um, in terms of regional planning commission, I have that letter from Claire Rock at, at the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission and she has established that um, the project is consistent with the regional plan. And then you've designated a contact person and um, Sharon is the proxy. And um, essentially it's a saying that you're gonna comply with the single audit act, but technically it won't apply to you because they only audit grants of over 750,000. But what they will do is like a monitoring visit based on all of the requisitions we submit, but it, it's not like an audit. It's not like they go through your books and tie everything out again. 
Before we go on, Liz and everyone else and the folks on the board, um, I thank you. You've answered actually a couple of the questions I have had on this one. So one is that yes, we have checked in with the regional planning commission and the pod, and the project is consistent with the plan. Thank you for saying that. Um, they only audit grants over 750,000. So, and then I'm gonna suggest to the board that when we approve this, we approve um, with a couple of minor changes that I'm assuming will, are, will be considered non-substantive, Liz. Um, one is that uh, I is it that we're resolving number one and number two, and then are the are the following one two, are the one two three four or five that come after subs of number two, or are they? Yes. Okay. They, it's just poorly. Okay, so yeah. so so you wouldn't mind if we made them indented them and made them bullets is no. that allowed yeah okay that's fine <laughs> okay that's one thing um on the first sub one the applicant or the sub one this applicant has a duty a duly adopted and current okay never mind i misread that the first time so that's fine um, the other change that I would request is that in line four, where it says, since the chair has recused, I'm designated. I'm not, I'm not designated because Denise is recused. I'm designated because the board designated me, right? Subtle difference. It doesn't, it might've been me anyway. I'm running or it could have been Rose, even though I'm, the fact that I'm chairing the, the board discussions is because Denise is recused. Um, yeah, I don't see any parent saying that. I'm not saying that, but De Denise, the point is that I am appointed by the board, not because you're recused, just because I just because they appointed me. It could have been Rose. The, so, so that number four, um, we can say it, but we don't have to say it. I don't, I don't feel like, <laughs> actually I do, I, I, no, we don't have to say that I'm appointed because Denise is recused. The board right. can appoint and the board can appoint anybody it wants to, to stand for the, in the terms, to stand in the shoes of the board as a delegate to take action for the board. Mm -hmm. So uh, it should say that the board designated member select board member Sharon Wynn as the authorizing official for the grants manager online. That's really what that line should say. So that's a change that I'm just bringing and Liz, I'm assuming there's no problem with that. When, well, I would just say that, um, I mean, this is really a question kind of, um, what's happening here is that this isn't a federal regulation, but the state does word this document as in terms of Vermont practices, a way of recognizing that the chair is like the CEO of the municipality. So the that's, original no, document- that's not, that's not true. The select board is okay. the CEO. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, all it's, I can share with you is that the original document- Right. Liz, normally, the, like the language has the chair of the select right. board or bada, 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 ba. So right. technically, legally, I'm sure, it's fine what you're saying. I, I think what you're saying is true. It's a nuance. It's not because of this, then that. Um, but, I just want to share with the original language does say right, the chair. Right, but you know, that's why I put in the, I mean, obviously when the chair has a conflict of interest and recuses themselves, then it goes to the vice chair. But that's, but that's to run the meeting. The, the, the select board can appoint anybody. So we could have appointed, unless I'm misunderstanding, of the select board can appoint any member of the board to serve as the delegate of, or the, I, I'll choose delegate for lack of the, the, maybe a better word, the designee of the board to stand in the shoes of the board to, to work with the group. 
and mm -hmm. and even if Denise had been chairing, it might not have been Denise because because you know we do a nice job of sharing the work around, and other people do things too. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I personally don't think you're going to run into any problems because of this. That's what I would expect. I mean, it, the, the point is that it's the board and I happen to be the one acting on behalf of the board. Right. I agree with um, Sharon's um, intent and I would like to see number four changed to reflect that. I just put in the chat the original language. So if that helps at all, that's all I can share. <clears throat> Um, right. And generally, I didn't, I don't remember this particular one, but um, in other, and this could have been the one I looked at really recently, the board is the CEO. We as a group are the CEO of a town, which is okay. different than, than maybe like a mayor or a town manager. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, gotcha. So, so, and then I can't see down at the bottom and whether Judy Fitch Roberts, yeah, it's unlikely that I will go over to the town office to have this notarized. I'll probably have my office mate in Montpelier do it for me so we can take Judy's name out. Right. So those are the, those are the things that I had on this one. So, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to, uh, I didn't mean to create so much um, whatever. No, let's do it right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, so Liz, I'm gonna. That's that's what I had on this one, since we are on it. Um, Rose, Cliff, uh, and John's not here. Rose and Cliff, do either of you have anything you want to add on this? This is the document where we authorize, where the select board authorizes the application. Resolves to authorize, resolves to apply, I guess. I'm fine with the recommended changes that you offer. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Thanks. Okay. Um, why don't we go through them all and then approve them and, as a group mm -hmm. with one motion? Liz, go ahead, keep going. Okay, um, thank you. So just to um, take up the municipal policies and, policies and codes, um, I'm sorry, I incorrectly wrote village, or no, someone checked town. Okay, great. I, I changed that. Thank you. Um, so this is the technically the language they want you to have on your books um, that complies, again, it ties up to federal regulations. And I believe you have some EEOC language already. This just kind of expands on that. And then the fair housing policy is likely new for you. And that gets connected with um, just someone at some point before the grant is over will need to participate in a video training of a fair, it's a fair housing training. It's just like a few hours long. Um, and you just have to get the training list from the Vermont Community Development Program and then show that it, somebody did it. Um, and all of this only applies when you're using community development funds. So if the grant is awarded and you never apply for community development funds again, then this all just becomes dormant. Excessive force, as you've probably seen before, um, federal lobbying is standard and that would actually apply, I think, to um, when you, it, using these funds, that's what they're talking about. So if you're doing federal lobbying with some other money, it doesn't apply to that as long as it's not federal. Same with code of ethics um, and then drug free workplace is its own, it's in here. And then they also have it as a separate resolution. So some of this is re likely redundant. Whistleblower is fairly standard. So these are all just, as they're called, standard municipal policies and codes when you're using federal money. Can you say again, um, there's a training we're supposed to do or someone should do? Yes. That, that, that is worth having Katie capture as an action item. 
so we don't forget. Yes, yeah, so there's a requirement that someone um, take a video training online and the department will provide the links and a schedule, or it might just be anytime you're able to do it. And it's pretty broad as far as when you need to do it. You just need to demonstrate to them that you've done it. They might make it a condition of, if you get a grant award of the grant agreement. Okay. Um, so it applies if we get the grant, right? Right. If you get the grant, if, we should be so lucky, right? Yeah. I mean, all of this is only if you get the grant. Is it is it the type of training that's relevant to all of these? policies and it really should be the town or is it a training that makes more sense for someone from ECCT to do? Yeah, it's a fair housing training. So it's really about housing discrimination. Okay. Um, so, so yeah. Okay. You thank know. you. Could I ask a question? This is Jan. Um, do, does this policy then get added to our website that we have enacted it? You know, we've got our policy policies and ordinances on our website, does this get added to it for public review or is this something that we just kind of keep in the file relative only to this grant? I would say uh, any policy that we pass is our the town policy regardless of whether it's it's you know ends up being broadly useful or not and it should be on the website. Okay. Folks, others, Rose, Cliff. I'm not quite so sure about that. If it, I'm just not quite so sure about that. I think it depends whether you get the grant. If you get the grant, then I would agree with Sharon. Yeah. Oh, that's a point. Yeah. So, all right. Well, it's a then, then, yeah. As a general, as a general matter, our policies and every once in a while we do come across one that we need. It isn't on the website, so that's what goes on in my head is the ones that, we, the ones before we had a website. <laughs> um, Katie can put it on the list of things to keep in mind or check out later. Right. Okay. Uh, Cliff, do you have anything you want to add? You're unmuted. I see. Yeah, if we if we get the grant, there could be a, a section on the website that discusses this project and uh, associated documents related to it will be stored there, and it'll be much easier to manage with our revised website that's coming soon to a screen near you. Okay, Liz, back to Liz. Okay, any other um, questions on the municipal policies and codes or should I move on to the drug-free workplace? I think, I think we're ready to move on. Okay. Yeah. So this um, is a pull out of the, all the municipal, municipal policies and codes, I believe because it ties up to a different federal regulation. I don't know why it's pulled out. Um, some archaic reason associated with federal regulations, I'm sure. And, it, you know, it essentially just talks about your employees being drug free and what happens if someone's convicted and all of that kind of protocol. It may be because States are um, states are legalizing certain substance, Ill, formerly illegal substances, and but if you use federal funds, that doesn't matter. You can't go by state law. You have to go by federal. So, Liz, does that mean that with the state law on uh, marijuana, it's a federal offense with marijuana, but the state? So, are you saying that? this policy here is going to override what we have in the state? Yes, I believe that's why it's pulled out. Hmm. Hmm. That doesn't surprise me. There is there is a, a very well-known tension between the states and yeah. not and we're not alone. Um, states laws on on 
marijuana and federal laws that we all just kind of live with, but we know it's there. Okay, does anybody have any questions about the drug-free uh, workplace? This is the one actually, um, in the draft we got earlier, Liz, at the top it says town of, it has East Callis. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I think I changed it. Did you change it? I did, yeah. So I now it says- each of these. Maybe we can make the supply only in East Callis. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it's so there is a there is a version, but not the one we have. Well, actually, you know what? I don't think you know how it says East Callis at the top. I attempted to edit them, but I don't think I did a good job on this one. So, I will. You sent me word copies, Mark. So I will, assuming that that they're, I assume if they're word, I can edit them. So I will make that change. Good. And then is it issued by, um, that's a question I have. It's issued, isn't it both issued by the select board and approved by the select board? Yeah, that could be. It's just, you know, this is such a generic thing. It can be any, Okay. it, 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 it imagines a large staff. Right, which we're clearly not. Okay, anybody? Rose Cliff, questions, comments on this one? No nope. questions. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, sorry about the village town thing. I think I spent too much time in Franklin County where you, you got a lot of villages and towns with the same name. <laughs> so, um, so the next would be the anti-displacement plan. And really the purpose of this is um, saying that if you are going to demolish a housing unit with low and moderate income people or convert it to a non-housing unit, you will comply, you, you will basically try not to do that with these funds. But if you had to, you would do a permanent relocation plan compliant with the Uniform Relocation Act. So in this case, you're the funds are not being used to take a lower moderate, moderate income unit off the market. So you're not it gonna hit this um, provision, but you still have to have it on your books. Thank you for making that really clear. It's not gonna, as a practical matter, it doesn't apply, but we have to have it on the books anyway. Exactly. Okay. Cliff Rose, questions? Sounds good to me. No questions. Right, and then finally is the notice of the public hearing is really just to show you um, what it, what the language contains. It's pretty much a template. And we um, set it up for to hold it right before your next meeting on January 25th. So it could start at 6.15 and we appreciate Sharon's willingness to be there. The BCDP staff did want someone from the select board to be there. Um, and, you know, if no one shows up, we could, well, we could warn it for 615 to 645 even, um, whatever you're comfortable with. And the other thing I wanted to point out is we're putting in a grant amount that's higher than what the request will likely be just so we're covered because you never want to err on the other side. Um, okay. And then there's a very general description of the project so the public understands what the grant application is for. And then we will, um, ECCT's consulting group, Pine Consulting, um, will be able to send people the narrative and the budget when they request it because people are entitled to read that before the public hearing so they have a greater understanding of the project if they want to ask questions and find out more. Um, what, I, what I'll need to do is just make sure this um, TTY number is accurate and how that works. And so we can figure all that out in the event that someone has a hearing impairment, we'll be prepared 
to serve them or maybe you all have some protocols set up. Um, and if anyone needs special accommodations, you know, we would work with the town on achieving that. Is this literally our Zoom meeting link or Cliff, is this one of ours or is this coming, it is ours? That would be our preference if, if we can do that. Well, if okay. I took this from an email that said, was a transmission of an email from you that said this was the link, is it accurate? It is, it's accurate. I, at, Denise asked me to set up the meeting and I sent her the email and she forwarded it onto the rest of the ECCT. Liz, um, this is Dan, do you, uh, will you be submitting this to the Times Argus or will you be asking one, somebody on ECCT to do that? Thank you for bringing that up, Jan. I forgot to mention that the Secretary of State has suspended the, those rules so that public hearings no longer need to be warned in a publication of circulation oh. with a tear sheet. So instead they, um, want it to be posted at the post office and the town offices. And then Denise mentioned it could be in front porch form, which I think would be wonderful because it would probably reach more people. Okay. So that's all they're requiring now under okay. the pandemic. All right, thanks. Okay, so, so um, this is our Zoom link, which means that Cliff, I don't know if you have other reasons you would like to attend this, um, and, yeah, I, and you, do, you don't need to, I, I can drive. Um, the only thing I get concerned about is if it actually does have a number of participants and we're trying to, you know, an un, unexpected number of, of people showing up and then we've got a moderating and driving and fielding questions a lot. That's a lot going on if it's a big meeting. Um, in your experience, Liz, and I think you've said there's no particular reason we should expect that. Well, that's been my experience, but I have to say that, you know, the um, inclusion of Front Porch Forum is a newer thing. So it's possible, you know, in a small community that people will tune into that. Plus, you know, people are in the habit of kind of like finding out what's on Zoom these days. <laughs> and then, um, right you know, it's an easier way to participate because you don't have to go somewhere. So it, it's very possible. And I'd be, you know, we would be happy to manage the Zoom if it's easier for us to put a link in either from Pine Consulting or someone on ECCT, we could work that out if it's easier. I yeah, think it's not a problem for me to um, be there just to help uh, um, organize things or whatever. Um, Sharon, I can log in, assign co-host to you, and then we both will have the ability to manipulate things within the meeting, pull things up on screen and whatnot, should the need arise. And uh, if nobody shows up, then it's pretty straightforward. If there's a lot of people showing up, there'll be both of us there to help keep things moving along. That sounds good. If, if nobody shows up, then, then I can, you know, sit with, is, that was one of the questions, who's gonna be there with me? So Cliff, but Cliff, if nobody shows up and we're just sitting here, then I can, you know, certainly, I can certainly uh, manage a Zoom room that's that's not overly active. Um, Liz, you'll be there. Yes, for sure. And Brian. Share cat videos. Right, and Brian will be there, and Mark, and folks from the ECCT. I assume you guys will be there. Yeah. Okay. Do we, um, do we need to take minutes? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Or you, I mean, whenever you prefer, but we're happy to do that. Okay, great. Thank you. So, okay. Do you want it recorded? Sure. I do would that. think so. That's yeah, good. thank you. Okay, great. Um, okay, so we're applying for up to 400,000. That's likely high. And Denise, um, this is just a process question for Denise. Denise, if we send this to the normal group that you send it to when you do uh, select board postings, it will land in all the right places? Yeah, I'm happy to send it out to all those folks. 
um, that's okay. I can I can do that if I if it's that group because we all you copy us on all of that. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Anybody? Any other questions? Cliff and Rose. No questions. No, I'm, I'm okay. fine. Thank you. Thank you all, all right. so much. Um, Liz, are you finished and you're ready for us to go ahead and approve? Okay. So I'm just quickly glancing through. Um, there were there were a couple of housekeeping things on the drug-free workplace policy, um, the issuing body and the town correction. I don't think we made any changes on the, the notice itself uh, or the broader municipal policies and codes. We talked through several changes on the resolution um, to make the application. So it's four documents, two of which we have some changes no, it's five, one, two, three, it's five documents. The resolution to apply, the big book of municipal policies and codes, the pullout of drug-free workplace, the anti-displacement and relocation plan, and the notice for public hearing. Um, I suppose we don't have to approve the notice. Do we have to approve a notice for public hearing? I guess we can. We also can approve it. You can approve the posting of it. All right. So is there a motion to approve these five documents with the changes we've discussed? Moved. Second. Uh, thank you. And I think you've already approved me to be the person acting on behalf of the town. So we probably don't really need to say that, but I'm just saying it anyway. Uh, okay, let's vote. Rose. Aye. Cliff. Aye. And I'm an I. That's it. We're a small group tonight. Thanks, guys. Liz thank and you. Mark, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for all the time. Appreciate it. We thank appreciate you. all your hard work. Yeah, this is a really exciting project. Thank Thanks, you. guys. <laughs> thank you. Take Denise, care. until we get our four hundred thousand dollars, then you'll really see how exciting. Yeah. It is. Yes. <laughs> I don't know, Liz. Are you sure it's just four hundred thousand? How about five hundred thousand? <laughs> I okay. like the round numbers. <laughs> All right. Take care. Premature. Right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you. Back to you, Denise. Okay. Um, I don't know that there was much of anything that Toby wanted to talk about other than he wanted us to approve the certificate of highway mileage, <clears throat> which we do every year. And if you look at the form, um, the mileage hasn't changed from last year. So that's really a non, a non issue. Um, so would the board like to approve the certificate of highway mileage, which is due February 10, 21? So move. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any questions? Um, would you like to? Let me see. Who has to sign this? Um, would you like to authorize me to sign this on behalf of the board? Since yeah, friendly amendment. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's vote. Rose. Yes. I. I'm an I. Cliff. I. And Sharon. Hi. Aye, aye, captains. Okay. Um, I see Alfred's name there. I don't see your body, so hopefully he can hear us. Alfred, we're ready for you. There you are. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm okay. Good. So um, thank you for sending around that evaluation from, what is it, Shang? Shang Graz? Shang Graz Trucking. Okay. Truck and trailer repair. Yep. So do you just want to run through that real quick just for so we can have it on the record? Uh, yeah, well, I don't know if that's what you asked for or not, but it was that he's the guy that works on that work on that truck um, and does the Vermont State inspection. 
So he's the Shangri-La employee. Who is it? He's the owner. Okay. Who? What's he's his name? Uh, Evan. Evan. Evan okay. Shangri-La. He okay. he has a shop in Williamstown that he works on big trucks, and that's uh, getting harder and harder to find anybody local to work on trucks. So I tried him out a little bit and I seem to be happy with his with his work. Good. Very good. Does the board have any questions on um, the evaluation? I did look through it. Um, can we um, can, the rest Alfred, of the can, well it's sort yeah, of that, I just it says it passed state, a state inspection with minor repairs needed, but it shows signs of a lot of rust and deterioration. Deterioration. And, you, and he's Sense worried. And, and, and a list below for to pass inspection this year. A list below is rusted body and frame. <laughs> Thank you, Cliff. Rusted dump body. Dump body body chain. Yeah, it's a side dump. So every one of our trucks has a chain in it, which delivers okay. it to the front of the truck, and then it drops down under in front of the wheels. Hmm. All of our trucks are set up that way. Uh, in this particular truck, it's the the body, the like the bottom of the chain has seen so much sand that it's wearing holes through it. Oh. So you know, between the rust and the wear of the chain, with the you know the brace of sand, it's uh, very thin and it's not going to hold together much longer. When is it due to be inspected in twenty one? I just got it inspected like last month, so. Oh, so we, you know, it's, as far as inspection goes, we're legal until next year. Till some, well, to the end of this this year, we're in. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Right. And what's this? What's this? Um, obviously, I don't know a lot about motors, but stuff is leaking. Uh, he says that there's motor oil leaking. Uh, from the filter housing, around so the that, filter housing. So does that have to do with the head gasket? Uh, no, that's to do with the the oil filter housing, which is what holds the how the the filter. Mm -hmm. it's, it's part of the motor, and it's a big job to change it. Um, the ABS monitor and wiring we've had constant trouble with that with that and i think it has a lot to do with just that it's an old truck and a lot of the wiring is worn and chafed mm -hmm. from vibration over the roads did he give you an estimate of what all this would cost to fix it uh no no because as far as like you said as far as this year it didn't it didn't it these repairs aren't required for inspection this year. Mm -hmm. But, you know, next year it's, it's, of course, it's going to be a year older. It's going to be that much more use. Yeah, um, yeah. We may find ourselves repairing it before then, such as the body, the, the inside of the body where it's rusted. Uh, if that catches, if that chain catches on that worn rusted steel, it's, it's, it's not going to work. It's going to, bind up and you know his concern is material falling out of the body as it goes down the road if it's got holes in the body it's going to fall down onto the road and and bounce onto other cars hmm. so that's certainly something that's going to have to be addressed at some point if we keep it hmm. um, i mean it is a 12 year old truck yeah. Does the and board, this is, does the board have any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Me. Go ahead, Jerry. Um, Alfred, this is this just to get things straight in my, in my head. So a couple of weeks ago, you brought a proposal to buy a truck, and that 
was not available anymore, but that would have replaced this one. Am I understanding things correctly? Yes, yes. We were, okay. gonna, we were gonna trade this one in towards a newer one, which was a 2014, uh, a good deal newer than this one. Okay, uh, so, all right. So I don't have any more specific questions about this truck. I think my questions, Denise, go to what action specifically are we taking tonight, if any? I don't think we're taking any action other than we wanted to have this information so we had a good understanding of where we stood with this truck and the need for replacing it. Um, I think we're still, Alfred's probably still looking and we'll bring his proposal if he finds another truck to the board for approval. And so, um, yes, that sounds, that sounds good. Do we want to have Alfred bring us a proposal um, that would authorize him? Alfred, you asked last, you, when you, I think it was at the last meeting, you and Toby described the tension around things come available and, and then waiting to get approval. Um, and I, I don't know if we've done this before as a board, but um, have, well, I'll ask uh, Denise and Rose, has the board ever, ever kind of broadly authorized a search to replace um, with certain parameters, which we don't have in front of us? That, that would be another step for Alfred to come back and say, okay, board, what I want is for you to authorize me to look for a truck that meets these criteria, blah, blah, blah. We don't have that now, but my question is, have you ever done that as a board? Not in the four years I've been on, although we did it sort of in the context of the last search, but we kind of got there together after a bunch of misfires. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't, I don't think we can really put a number to it until I find the truck. I mean, I, right. I mean, I definitely want your blessing to keep looking and that you guys are, are into the idea, but you know, I don't want you to approve a certain number until I know what truck it is, you know what I mean? Or how much it's going to cost. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I mean, we haven't normally bought used trucks. It's always that's been a new one. So we knew what the right. number was. And we put That's it right. into the to the budget. So this is a little bit of a twist. Um, I would be okay authorizing Alfred to keep searching and come back to us with what he finds um, with a figure. Um, Rose, do you have that same recollection? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've authorized, you know, the road commissioner or operate and or operations manager to seek out equipment. Um, whether or not it was a new uh, used excavator, a used road grader, a used trailer, um, and, you know, spec it out and come back to us with the information. Um, and we so did that, that with is, the, and yeah. didn't we do that with the pickup, Rose? Yeah, I think so. Because the, yeah. the pickup, the pickup was used, I'm remembering. and no, you found a, not the one we have now. No, I'm no. talking about the other one. Oh, way, way, way back, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think what I'm hearing from the board, um, and Cliff, you haven't weighed in yet, but you're, you're welcome to, is that to go ahead and look and then come back to us with what you find. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I think what was said at last meeting was just that we were asking you to be prepared to jump fairly quickly if I do find one. Mm -hmm. Right, but you know the information that we're going to be looking for to and approve. I, and I soon. will provide that as soon as yep. I find the truck. I mean, as soon as I find a truck, I'll have all that information. I'll have the asking mm -hmm. price, I'll have the specs, I'll have what they're going to offer for trade, which I had on this truck. And the trade value is probably not going to change a whole lot, I'm guessing. Yeah, but I forget what that amount was. Was it 13? 15,000. 15. And that was on a document from Charlie Boys. Yeah, right? I remember that. Explaining the truck that I wanted to buy at that point. Right. And what was the price tag on the truck you wanted to buy? It was 83000 minus the trade was going to be 68000 out of town pocket. Okay, so that's a, that's a 
that's a number that has it's some. A, well, it's a ballpark number that, you know, a range of where we want to be in. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Okay. And, so, and since, I mean, since that truck, I haven't seen nothing. I haven't seen anything <laughs> that, that's even close to that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm really bummed out that we missed that, but timing is everything. And Right. Okay. So are we all clear? Alfred is going to continue to look, bring forth to the board what he finds. He knows what questions we're going to ask. We've got the evaluation on the 2009 that we asked for. Thank you for doing that. Thanks, Alfie. Yeah. Thank you, Alfred. You're welcome. Okay. Next Appreciate up. It. Next up is the um, the wood chipper and the check for the refund. Um, and John's not available to join us tonight, but I know he had asked you some questions about the fuel. I don't know whether you ever got back to him about that. About about what? He had asked some questions about um, could it have been our error and that the somehow the I don't know whether it was diesel or gas, but something got you know mixed up. That was cleared up at a select board meeting. I answered those questions at a select board meeting hmm. that it was impossible for that to happen. Okay. I mean, we it's the same fuel that we use in all of our trucks and all of our trucks run fine. So it came right out of our tank. Okay, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking um, he's not, like I said, he's not here, but I know that he had some questions. So maybe they're all answered. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I answered those specific, those specific questions at a select board meeting. I went on in details about that because it's just impossible. <clears throat> okay, well, we'll find those, we'll find those minutes. That's what I was going to, can I add to that, Denise? I agree. Let's find the minutes. And if, and if the minutes seem insufficient on this point, then, then Katie, I don't know if we can ask you to listen to the discussion again and capture more detailed minutes so that we really do have, because I mean, you know, I love that the meetings are recorded, but as a practical matter, we really need it in the minutes and then we can revise the minutes if necessary. Mm -hmm. Katie, is that too much to ask you to do? No, okay, thank you. Um, okay, and the other, the other issue, Alfred, is we are gonna be meeting on the 18th as we've scheduled off Mondays for personnel stuff. And we'd like you to join us so we can talk about the process, adver advertising and filling a position on the road crew, or actually maybe two, one temporary and one full-time. Are you available on the 18th? Uh, of course. Okay. So we That's would- That's the right you, answer. We would have you. We, we would have you on first thing at seven. So, however, that's uh, that's a week away. Right, but we need to go through the process of you know posting an ad and all those things. So, well, um, while we're on that topic, I might have found a, a possibility for the part-time position. Oh, the temporary. The temporary, correct. Um, a young young kid that is uh, very eager to work and lives in town. Um, has I, CDL. He has a permit and an appointment for for his test. Good. Um, his appointment is February third, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, and he is ready to start as soon as we are ready to have him start, mm -hmm. which means we have to get him drug tested. And uh, as far as the CDL license goes, he can he can drive the little truck for a week or two mm -hmm. until he passes the CDL. Um, so. With all that said, I guess I am wondering if if I can move forward with him. I mean, he's already got the he's already given me his application all filled out. All the paperwork which Sandra provided to me is all filled out. Mm -hmm. um, 
and this and this is the temporary position so it's not the, the full time temporary, right. temporary yeah. part time whatever you want to call it it's not the full time because i i i am it just happened <laughs> yeah right on friday yeah. so i haven't I think, had any time to even think about the full time and nor have we talked Right, and that's what we want to do on Monday the 18th. I mean, personally, as one select board member, I don't have a problem with the, you filling the temporary position. Others, Cliff, how do you feel about it? Uh, Alfie, what's the time frame for the drug testing? How long does that process take? Uh, I usually have to have Sandra uh, schedule it. So it's usually two or three days they can get it in. And then the applicant has to show up at the town garage and then it's like another 24 to 48 hours to get the results. Okay. So probably four days, four or five days. Is this a, a precondition of employment or is it uh, you say, okay, we're bringing you on with the caveat that you have to pass this test or do we say you have to pass this test first before we bring you on? Yes, he has to pass it. I can't let him operate any equipment until he passes the drug test. Okay, so okay. the normal hiring process would be the next step is we get the, the drug test and he comes back clean and then we hire him. Correct. Okay, so theoretically, uh, you know, this might bowl over, it, not be resolved till Monday of next week anyway. Um, the only other question I would have, and I don't know if this is appropriate for um, an executive okay. session or not, you don't have to tell us because I'm not sure on that point, but I would be wanting to understand the, the rate of pay and the hours I that you would get. Yes, can well, I, that, can that I... brings us to a, a fair amount of discussion Yep. Um, because that also includes uh, a part-timer that we already have okay i think so, when we talked didn't we when we talked about this before i think we talked about it as the same rate of pay that our current temporary is receiving didn't we i couldn't say for sure i'd have to go back and yeah i'd have to go back and look but maybe so, i mean if, if well I'm sorry, again you, we may want to revisit that because it's not easy to fill these positions and mm -hmm. I'm hearing vibes from our now part-time that he wants more. Mm -hmm. So, so what I, I want to build on Cliff's where Cliff, I think where you were headed, um, Alfred, there's time for this to be working contemporaneously. So, so what the board is asking for is a meeting with you Monday night to be sure that we're all on the same page on next steps. The exact rate of pay can be part of that conversation. I agree with Denise. I don't, I don't see, and I think Cliff, you were here too. I don't see a barrier to us, you moving forward and just letting him know that you're, your final numbers are going to be, and and maybe some other things that the select board wants to talk with you about will be come through on Monday. But in the meantime, this guy is your pick, and you'd like him to go, you know, do the drug testing and get started, so that maybe even as early as Tuesday morning next week he can start. Yeah, I would say what I'm what I'm hearing is it sounds like go ahead and get him signed up to get his drug test doesn't sound like you between the drug test and waiting for the results it doesn't sound like it would happen until monday or tuesday anyways because monday i don't know if they work on monday but monday's technically a martin was a king jr day and then monday night we could talk about the rate if he's willing to do that knowing that we're going to talk about the hourly rate on monday night right yes i i I think we can hold off for that and just keep the process going, getting him eligible mm -hmm. for the position. And, but there's one more thing. Um, he needs a truck to drive 
to the for the driving test. Mm -hmm. um, so I told him there's a possibility that he could use one of our trucks. Um, Do you go with him in that case? Uh, yes, in the past I have. I because he needs a he needs a licensed driver with him to get to the testing site. We didn't we do that with somebody else? Yes, let them use we the did. Truck? We did, and honestly, mm -hmm. I said I would never do it again. But honestly, I'm a little bit desperate for help, and yeah. I kind of believe in this guy a little bit. As far as for part time, he is not interested in a full time. He's got his own things going. Um, particularly in the summer. So he is not interested in the full time. So we are going out on the limb a little bit here, but he's right here in town and mm -hmm. he's willing, willing to learn. And so I feel like I will try it again. Where in town does he live, Alfred? He lives on Loose Road. Okay. Is it, a pro I mean, I don't know about other select board members. Is it a executive session discussion to know who the name of this person I, I i don't i would be uncomfortable you know we've already said we're sending this person for drug testing <clears throat> yeah well let's let's go through the process before we because we don't know if we're even going to hire him okay right so we can wait yeah. Yeah. yeah okay well let's talk about it more monday night um, and we'll have you on at seven and I'll send you the info for the meeting. Okay. 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 Did you have anything else for us? Cause I think Judy and Sandra are waiting for us to talk about town meeting. Oh, Katie. I'm just wondering to be clear that the, it sounded like the road commissioner had asked about, um, participating or having willingness to support this candidate in their CDL license is, will that, will there be no action on that? Should, should I not write the board agreed or disagreed that that'll be decided after the meeting on the 18th? Yeah, let's leave it for confirmation on the 18th. Well, I mean, that's sort of a hinge point for him. If he doesn't have a take, have a truck to take mm -hmm. to his license. But he has to pass the seed. He has to pass the drug test before even that can get scheduled, right? No, it's scheduled. He's already got it scheduled. Oh, I see. Okay, that's what's happening on February 3rd. February 3rd is the driving test, which gets him his CDL license. Mm -hmm. the, but, drug, the drug test is totally separate. That's that's our requirement. That's the town of Calus's requirement for him to be drug screened. Right, but even so, we're meeting on the we're meeting Monday night next week. So we can talk further about this in executive session because it seems it's a little uncomfortable to be doing it, you know, here right now. So can and, you yeah. can you get him his drug test scheduled and taken and and just let him know, you know, that we're going to talk about it Monday night. Yes, I mean that's that's really the first thing is the drug screen. If he can't right. if he can't pass a drug screen, then he can't work for us. Well, and he probably can't take the CDL test either. Um, well, actually, that's not true, but oh, okay. but not not with our, not with our truck, right? Not with our truck. That's right. 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 <laughs> yeah, right. that's what I was getting at. Okay. Do you uh, have anything else quick for us? Uh, no. Sounds like um, maybe we can have a large discussion next Monday night and cover a lot of bases that really need to be covered. Certainly, we're going to cover this one that we've this raised one, with you. Right. This one and the um, filling of the other person. That's that's what's much, on our that's, agenda. That's what's going to be on the agenda to talk about. Well, you might want to think about putting some other things on the agenda too. Well, why don't you send me an email with what those might be? Okay, sure will. All right, are we ready to move on? Anything else, Alfred? Thank you. I uh, can't think of anything else unless you want me part of the budget. I think we're, the budget is, the highway budget, we've, we've mostly approved, we've approved the highway budget. Um, tonight, what we're gonna do, because we didn't, do it exactly right and then the number changed by four hundred and eighty seven dollars for the general government budget 
So that's basically it. So you're you're welcome to stay. It's a public meeting, but um, we're really just going to be finalizing the bottom line budget numbers, which is what you and Toby had given us pretty much. Okay. Um, can we go back to the chipper just briefly? Yeah, briefly. Um, because where are we at with that? Well, we got that we got a refund last five thousand dollars. So the item on the budget tonight, which we need to give Sandra permission to deposit the refund check from what is it, Virginia Equipment? So we're losing five thousand right. dollars, actually, plus six plus another thousand because we paid Milton Cat to work on it or to diagnose the problem. So where is that six thousand dollar loss coming from? It's just, it's just it's a loss. But what part of the budget does it come out of? Is my question because that that article that was agreed to by the town was supposed to be a loan. Right, it is a loan. So why should the highway deposit the uh, the budget? take that hit because it was a highway line item loan isn't that isn't it a isn't it a loan sandra yes we can uh take that money and pay down the loan and it will then sh likely shorten that loan by a year and the and the budget amount that was approved if you find another one, um, I guess we'd have to figure out. So this is an interesting question. So if we pay off the loan, except for the five thousand or whatever it was, is six thousand. Well, didn't we pay though the thousand dollars to Milton? Didn't that just get paid out of a line item? It didn't get paid out of the loan, I don't think, did it, Sandra? No. It just got paid Not out of the that. highway no. budget. So really, it's it's a five thousand dollar hit. The town approved. I forget the exact amount. What was it? Twenty thousand, Alfred. Twenty one. used twenty one for a used chipper. So we would have to talk about if you find another one. Um, would we? It seems like the town approved the twenty one. So maybe we would. So I'm just kind of thinking out loud. Maybe the the loan would still be for 21 um, because that's what was approved by the voters. It's 25 up to up 25. To 25. Up to okay. So I guess right. we'd have to talk about that if you find another one. So that's a, it's an interesting question. I don't really know the answer, Alfred. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Enough said. Okay. I guess if we're going to buy another one, I probably should be part of it. Okay. Thank you for your comment. Uh, okay. I guess that's it. All righty. Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll see, see you, you, see you Monday, Monday night. night. All yep. right. Thank you. Have a good well, evening. Thanks, Alfred. Bye. Um, all right. Judy, Sandra, thank you for joining us. Um, I hope I got everything down that we need to do. So um, we wanted to, you need us to vote, Judy, to confirm the informational meeting? Is that what you're looking for us to do? I thought you did that last week. Yeah, I thought we did too. So um, this was just to make, basically confirm that that's what we decided to do. And Gus is, you Gus is available. Uh, I sent him an email. He didn't respond. Okay, we should circle back and just check and see if he's available because I think that's kind of what we talked about doing. Okay. So, so I think it's the warning that we're looking at and making sure that the numbers, uh, the bottom line numbers, are correct on the warning on the final this this latest draft of the warning, um, and yeah. then. I think Jim has chimed in about some questions we had about articles. 
Yeah. So Cliff, can you call up the budget so we can look at those bottom line numbers again? Yep. Um, and they did, it did, was it $487 or something, Sandra, you said? Yes. Okay. Yes. We put a so, finer point on the, uh, on the uh, solid waste district number and on the county tax number. Both of those right. numbers came in at the last minute. So, so it's, um, going, it's going up slightly. Down. Down, down okay. $487, Sharon. You believe it? All right. Yeah. So we like that. So the only thing we're doing tonight <laughs> is voting on the bottom line number, which is the general government and highway amount combined. Without special articles. Right. Well, and that's where, so last week we voted on all three as one lump, which I took from Jim's emails is fine because we're not approving the articles yet. We're just basically, you know, giving a blessing to the numbers and the articles when we approve, am I understanding right? When we approve the articles is when we approve the whole slate of articles. Isn't that how we do it? We normally put in are the budget. We, are we actually approving the article for the budget we, tonight? No, we are. The voters approve the special articles. I understand that, but we authorize, we approve, the voters also approve the budget. It's right. just a question. It's just a question of, it's, you know, Jim was clear that they have to be separate articles, but I didn't understand that when we wrote it last week, we were actually approving articles where we were blessing the numbers that we'd come up with is my take on what we did last week. Right, but that included the special articles. So what we wanna vote on is what's there in yellow, the total right. budgeted expenses. But, but my point is we are also at some point going to bless the special articles. And- And that, I, I guess we didn't bless the articles last week, period. We blessed the global number that included a special articles number and exclude, included the town budget. So my point is, if we are, if tonight we're gonna take a different approach because we like to do it that way better, then we're still a going to be approving articles at some point that include general government and highway budget, an article that improves, uh, includes special, what do we call it? Special stuff? Special, um, special articles. This is all gets done when we approve articles. The when we approve right. the warning, it includes the special articles. And so, so that's, again, my question though is, are we approving the article that is at the town government and highway budget tonight, or are we just blessing the numbers so that, you know, Judy and Sandra know what to bake into the articles? We need to approve for the warning, the total combined of the highway and general fund, which is this 1.7. Then we need to approve the warning amount for the special amounts, which I can't see right now, but that's in the warning. So we're doing both. So we are actually approving articles tonight. We are approving the articles that will be in the warning, but we have to approve mm -hmm. how much we're authorizing to put in the warning for general government and highway. As part of the warning, it includes that list of all the social services agencies and that total amount. So when we approve the warning, we're improving everything that what we've done before, and Jim said it makes common sense, is to approve the general government and highway budget amount. So can we do that or do we need to talk about it more? So when we approve the general government and highway budget now, 
we are approving the article and we don't, there's not another time when we approve that. Correct. And okay. then the voters, and then the voters decide whether they approve the amounts that we put in. Right, just like they decide whether they approve the special articles, which we also have to approve as a separate article. Correct. And then they, so get, I, and they, they get baked into the warning. So last week, I thought we were just blessing the numbers. If we are actually approving an article, then I think that our motion should state that we are approving the article that is the general government and budgeted highway expenses for the warning. Okay, I don't know, it seems to, well, I won't say, but are we ready to approve in its article three, I believe, which is the combined general fund highway budget. And I think it's, isn't that article three, Judy? Yeah, I had it, I had it printed off somewhere. Yeah. So that combined amount is $1,710,976 to be placed on the warning as article three. And I'll make that as a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, is there further discussion? Second. Okay. Are you ready to vote or is there further discussion on that? All right, um, Sharon? Aye. I'm an aye. Um, Cliff? Aye. And Rose? Uh-oh, I think- Aye. Rose, I think you're frozen there, Rose. I heard aye. you say aye. Oh, okay, there you go. All right, now for, um, let's review the warning and then we will have to insert the amount for the special articles. Can you, so can you call up the warning, please? Yeah, working on it. Okay. Having a problem. Stand by, please. We're standing by. You got a good joke while we're waiting for you? None that could be recorded. <laughs> no, you Cliff usually has a has one. So the latest version of the warning that I gave you has everything filled in. So Judy, we don't have to do babysitting and snacks and all that, right? No, it's really streamlined. Yep. And I attended um, that VLCT Zoom thing today, which was quite interesting. They're talking about, just while we're waiting for Cliff, they're talking about $180 million state budget deficit in FY22, or maybe it was FY21, because we're still in FY21. That's a lot of money. Okay, it looks like the most recent version, Judy, is dated uh, today? Yeah. Okay. That should be it there. Thank you, Cliff. You're welcome. All right, so can we make it a tad bigger? Uh, huh. uh, maybe like that. How's that? That's better. Um, Okay, so let's go through this. I did double check this today just to have another set of eyes with um, dates and times and all that. And we're looking, we still don't know, Judy, right? Whether 
we're going to be mailing this to all the registered voters or if it's, do we know? Well, you the warning is different. The warning, um, once it's approved, uh, I can, um, it's separate from the ballots, you know, the ballots essentially are another version of the warning with check boxes. The warning has a different process for being disseminated. I'll post it on, um, I mean, I can post it on Front Porch Forum, on the web and in three places in town. Um, and it of course will be in our town report. Mm -hmm. And oh, then, right, right. And it's the ballot that gets mailed to every, well, that's what we're waiting for the legislature to vote on hopefully this week, uh, what the process suggested process or required process is for mailing the ballots, whether each town has its own, um, you know, protocol about that to decide how to mail ballots or whether it needs to be mailed to all or whether there's some other hybrid of that. Right. And we're waiting for that final from the Secretary of State. Right. And as you said today, there's also the overlay of the school district and that they have a ballot that five towns need to distribute. And if each town has its own version of distributing, how will that be coordinated? So all that needs to be worked out very soon. Right. But well, our, goal, I, our goal tonight is to approve this warning. Right. And knowing that this Thursday is the deadline for any public um, articles to be submitted, I haven't heard of any being any rumblings of any, so I'm kind of doubting if we're going to get one. Unless yeah, you... I had I had heard something about some kind of school resolution, but I don't see that coming to fruition. Right. So um, I think this is in good shape. I've gone over it several times, and this is the third version or something. And it, Sandra and I walked through it this morning, so I think I think it's good. But you know, there may be something I've missed, and we probably want Jim to to give it a final look at. Yeah, we'll want him to look at this and the ballot. And um, I'm pretty sure that the town agent is no longer a position. Um, yeah, they, they, did a, they did away with that. Right, so I took that off. Yeah, I think it was last year or the year before, I think. Maybe it was last year was the first year we didn't have to, we didn't do that. Yeah. Okay. So All I, right. in this preamble, I tried to, describe to the voters what the new system is because of COVID mm -hmm. as succinctly as possible. Yeah, okay. And all so right. essentially all floor, all, all um, votes that would normally be on the floor have been transferred to this as an Australian ballot vote. And that's what you approved. Mm -hmm. So the moderator will actually end up being on the ballot, but this is article one in the warning. Mm -hmm. And then each of these positions will be on the ballot with the names of people who've submitted consent forms by January 25th. Mm -hmm. uh, so far I have, let's see, so far Wilson has um, submitted one for Lister. Okay. And Laura Daly has expressed interest in the cemetery commissioner position. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so article three. This is what we just voted to approve. This is the amount that's in our budget. And Cemetery Commission is just um, flatlining their budget. Um, so is in Kellogg Hubbard Library. Here's the one about the special. The, um, we used to call it social services. We're now calling it nonprofit organizations. Um, this is the dollar amount, the $30,110. So if we approve the warning, that in effect is what is in our budget, that in that purple line. And that went up by how many, that went up by like three, a little over 3,000, right? Um, the, the friends were added. And one other. Yeah, now this $500 is out of line here, but I'm sure you'll yeah. fix that. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a final um, formatting. Yeah. Uh, the friends were added. There were uh, another one added. And then I think one of these, Barbara told me, had gone up, but I don't recall which one. Yeah, I, 
forget which one was went up a little bit. Oh, I know it was, it was people's health and wellness went up. Yeah. That's the one that went up. <coughs> Is everybody well, good with the Samaritan Haven was added? Oh, right. Oh. Now, how much are they? 500. Okay. Anybody have any questions on the um, nonprofits requesting money in the bottom line? Does anybody have any questions? I don't. Aaron, Cliff, Rose? Okay. Nope. All right. No. Nope. And the articles on the taxes, that we're not changing anything there, correct? We're doing it the same way we did it this past year? Right. Sandra yeah. and I went through it. Okay. Uh, the, do, we, do, we finally, do we finally get that one to a point where it works and nobody complains? Well, I don't think you're ever going to get it so nobody complains. It is taxes after all. Well, but we it took us two or three rounds to kind of get this, you know, so that the kinks are worked out. But are we there? Sounds like we're there. Um, no, but we didn't want to change anything this year because so much about this town meeting has changed that we wanted to keep this process the same as it has been. At some point, I would ask the select board to consider taking out the postmark uh, right. as, as being the marker for whether or not a payment is on time. Right, because you tell you sometimes you have to wait weeks to make sure you've got all the postmark ones in. It's seven, it's seven days. We we absolutely waited seven days this time we were receiving postmarked the uh, envelopes seven days after the due date or well, this the, is seven, seven days after the grace period right so we just need to be thinking about this for next year i've taken notice that in, in article 11 this year we set the penalty the same as what was set at town meeting. Uh, last year's article proposed a 4.5% penalty, which you had had for a couple of years. At town meeting, it was voted to 3%. We kept it at 3%. Mm -hmm. Again, that's uh, something the board can think about. Um. In and article Judy, you, in article nine, it looks like there's yeah, I see that typo now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so select board, how do you feel about leaving it the same with the three percent? I think that's good. Leaving it the same as what the voters approved when they could discuss it is really good. Yeah, and this is what we did last year, so that makes sense to me as well. Agreed. Okay, and so article. Mm -hmm. Um, Great. Okay, Article 12. And that's it. It's pretty there straightforward. Excuse me? It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it is. All right. So I assume you'll fix those couple of typo things. Right. And we because Jim, Jim chimed in after I had done this, we'll get rid of the, you know, we know that those articles will not be folded into the general budget. So they'll remain on, yeah. on the warning and on the ballot. So are there any questions for Judy or Sandra about the warning? Thank you, ladies. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. So well, I, would make, I would make a motion you. that we approve the warning as presented with obviously the fixing of a couple of typos um, and that we send it to Jim Barlow for review before it goes to the printer. And just with the caveat that the 14th is the deadline so that if we receive a public article that would be reviewed on the 18th. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Are you ready to vote or is there any further questions or discussion? Sharon? Aye. I'm an aye. 
I'm sorry, I couldn't understand what you said, Rose. Who had a who had a question? I can't. I, I keep who's... cutting out, and so I, I just want to make sure. Rose, we can't. We can't Can hear you, you hear Rose. Me? Barely. You keep cutting out. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Yes. I know. Yeah. So, is this just to approve the warning? The, the warning and the dollar amounts and all that, yes. Oh no, she's gone again. Are you having the are you having the same amount of internet issues, Sharon? She, over over your way? I'm seeming to be okay. Rose is ephemeral tonight. Yes. You had the same problem last week, Rose, I think. I'm yeah, I yeah. am. Okay, I Aye. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Aye. You, Rose. Thank you, Rose. Okay. Done. Thank you so much. That Aye. was entertaining. Aye. Okay. And the record, I'm an I. Jeez. And I'm, an, yeah, I thought you were, yeah, you already voted, I thought, Cliff, right? No. You, you were asking me just as we, Rose, uh, oh, I okay. did with her question. All right. So are you good, Katie? Can I hear one more time the caveat about the deadline? I think it was that the deadline for petitions is January. The no, deadline for public petitions is January 14th. Thank you. Okay. But the, and the select board to finish Judy's thought, the select board will review them at our for approval at our meeting on the 25th. Oh. Well, no, we would have to do it on the 18th because they'd have to get to the printers before the 25th. Okay, 18. so we are, okay. And that's what we were talking about earlier. If anybody's heard a rumbling about anything, um, a heads up is good. And I don't think there's been too much rumbles. No. All right. Um, gosh, guys, we might actually be done by maybe nine o'clock. You didn't jinx us. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. All right, anything else, Judy, Sandra, town meeting? No. no, I'll just keep you posted as we get more information about the legislature and how that affects our timeline. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Nice okay. job. Thank you all. Nicely Thank done. You. Thank you. Good night. Take care. Good night. Thank you. Um, all right, so maybe we can get through the rest of this stuff fairly quickly. Um, we had a request from last name is Ross. Um, they want us to, they sent Judy an email and said that they wish the town office staff would call them if they don't come in on time to pay their taxes because they were, the, they had the, um, the penalty applied because they were late, but Anyways, I'll for, I'll send around. I think Judy sent around the um, abatement request, so we're going to have to do that. Plus, there are those small dollar amounts. You know, any anything under a dollar that are in need of abatement as well. So we need to schedule an abatement meeting. Um, we've done it recently. We've done it like at six before our regular meeting. And there's no time, there's no time limit on you have to have an abatement hearing within so many days of receipt of a request. So we could either look to do it, um, and I don't think there's enough time to warn it right now, but we could do it on the 25th. And we may need to do a BCA BOA meeting before town meeting. So Judy's thinking about whether or not we need to do that. But we can what's do the, Denise, what's the name of the, I remember seeing an email and I can't find it again. So just say again, the name of the folks and Katie, maybe we don't need to put this in the minutes. It's W-A-S-S. -S. Oh, right. Up on Adamant Road. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So um, they filled out the form. Would you like to do it on the 25th at like 6 15. I don't know how long it 
I don't know how long it will take. We can only abate um, based on the criteria that are listed there. So take a look at that before we meet. So Denise, on the 25th at 6.15, Cliff and I committed ourselves to being in the ECT. CC. Oh, that's right. that's right. Well, but that might actually be perfect <laughs> if there's a different Zoom room. Um, we won't have a quorum and, though. Okay. Well, that's the question. Will you have, If does it have to be a quorum of the select board? It has to be a quorum of the BOA. Right. So, all right. So let's look at maybe doing it on February 1st. And that way, maybe if there's stuff that Judy needs to have the BCA involved with, we can do them all in one meeting, half an hour for each. Are folks available on the 6th at uh, on the on the first at six, I know Rose. You probably don't know your schedule yet, right? Rose is Rose. You're right. <laughs> on the on the, on the no on the first, a February first at six. I can hear again. Oh, okay, good. Well, are at least um, Sharon, Cliff, and I, are we about, I, I can be available on the first at six. Cliff and Sharon? Yep. Okay, Sharon? I, I, I guess so. I, I, like, I like better the idea of multi, of, of divide and conquer on the 25th. Oh, yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. Well, the problem with that, Sharon, is our Zoom license won't let us have simultaneous sessions. So we would okay. have to use somebody else's Zoom license for the other meeting for the BOA or something like that. Are you asking if we if we could use mine? If that's no. the issue. Well, that, that's there, one way we could do it. Some of us might like to participate or at least listen to the meeting on the 25th. Ah. Okay, because the listers um, are part of the BOA as well as the select board. So we might be really not able to have a forum. Rose, can you, you don't have any way to know ahead of time, right? I mean, if we have three of us from the select board on the first, and Jan is usually the one from the listers that would be available. Um, and then there's Judy and Sandra, and then some of the BCA members. So that I think would work out the best as far as ensuring that we have a quorum for that meeting. Mm -hmm. I, I can do it. I just, I am, I am, you know, you fill up your calendar with meetings and then then nothing else in life happens. And that's, I, I, I just wanna say, we really need to be mindful of, of the time that we're spending in meetings. And I hear you, Denise, but I think we, should, we it's, it's, I'm still gonna just keep saying where we can, can find opportunities to divide and conquer, we should be doing it. Yeah, hear you. All right. So, And any time the Zoom is in a barrier, then I have my, I'm perfectly willing and happy to share my, my Zoom account with the town. Okay, thank you so much. All right, I don't know um, what's going on for sure about the solid waste management issue. I know the AG's office issued an order and um, I think the Chittenden Solid Waste Management District, I think they have, I forget how much of a fine it is, but it's a pretty hefty fine. Um, and like I said, I did, I did look at what was sent around about that, but I didn't digest it because usually John does. So I don't really have anything to say about that. Um, town Hall, the lights are out, the wreaths are off, and it's sitting there in all its glory. 
waiting to be used. Anything else on town hall, Cliff? Uh, no, we just, I've got to coordinate with everything else that's been going on. I didn't want to throw more on their plate, but I got to coordinate with uh, Judy um, to get that second uh, phone line turned on. Yes, that would be nice. She's, she's the one on the account, so okay, that's what I figured out. So we'll need her to make the call. And where, um, where, where are we on um, a friend's agreement? We have, have we haven't. If we've done that, we did it at a meeting I wasn't at. We don't have an agreement. The friends uh, went on hiatus for most of the holiday. We will have our first meeting in well over a month. Um, this week on the 14th, and that's going to be one of the topics of discussion, but I don't know that we will be in a position to bring a draft to you uh, before the end of this month. Does it sound like as long as the town, as Denise said, as long as the hall is just sitting there looking pretty, we don't need it, right? Um, no, it would be nice, though, right. if we can get it uh, resolved prior to reopening the hall because there is still the question of who's going to be responsible for doing what parts of maintaining the building. Mm -hmm. and, ske and scheduling. Right. And Absolutely. Yep. No, I agree. I agree. But that's one good thing about COVID. <laughs> Makes a couple of things slightly less pressing. Okay. Do you Thank have you. any you have any IT updates, Cliff? Um, no updates per se, but um, we can put this on the agenda for either the next meeting or the next regular meeting, whatever. I would prefer we put it on an agenda as soon as possible um, because I want to talk to the board about uh, investing in some additional conferencing equipment that will come in handy for uh, running this information meeting that we're going to need to do in lieu of the town meeting. Okay, so investing in additional equipment to host the informational meeting? Yes. Okay. Because if we're going to do it, we'll need to get it on order sooner rather than later. All right, maybe we can do that um since it's since it's a priority issue with timing and equipment probably everybody else is thinking the same way and stuff is selling out yep so i'll put it on i'll put it on for the 18th if you think you'll be ready to talk about it i'll be ready okay um would you like to approve some minutes sure i think that I can't remember now where we left off. Well, let me get there and we'll figure it out. Looks like uh, first up would be the minutes from a joint meeting held on December 7th. Okay. That was with the, was that the fire department or the, with the East Montpelier Select Board? That's with the East Montpelier Select Board. Okay. I'm hoping everyone can see that. Let me can expand it a little if you'd like. Okay. Yeah, I remember reviewing those. Well, let me. Well, the only problem if I expand it that much, you can't see the sidebar. There you go. So Sharon had some word I changes. Had, yeah. There was some. Um... Rose made some. Looks like everybody here has been through them, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to see what was Rose's comment up above. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Thank you, Rose. Cliff, did you have a chance to look at them? I did. Okay. Is everybody good with these, with the um, changes as noted? 
Yeah, um, move to approve. <laughs> I'm gonna go with yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Cliff made a motion, I'll second it. Um, Sharon, you wanna vote? Aye. I'm an aye. Cliff's an aye. Rose clicked out again, but that's three of us and she made changes anyways. So I think we're good to move on to the next set. Okay, next set is a meeting of 12, 14, 14, 14. and as well as continued on the 19th. Of December. Yes. Okay. I didn't see as many edits in this batch. Yeah, I know I looked at them. Wait, which one is this? This is 14. The, what's the one you're in? Okay. Yeah, I had, I'm, I had, a couple of changes, but I'm worried they're not showing up there because I can see them, but I don't. Oh, yeah, there they are. There we yeah. go. Okay. So is that a question then, Sharon? Yeah, the contract presented indemnifies the town and holds it harmless and allows for flexibility on the part of the town road. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, so I read that. I thought, well, what flexibility does it allow for? Um, and allows for flexibility on the part. If we're going to say that, I would want to say what flexibility we're allowing, right? But we can, this is not a very big deal. So we also should write around it and take that out. Yeah. Um, holds and the town, and identifies Sharon, and holds it, period. Sharon, holds it did, harmless. Didn't the contract say what the flexibility was yeah i just didn't go back and look yeah but um, i mean i think but it's i think it's covered wouldn't it be covered in that yeah yeah so we can just katie end that sentence that holds it harmless period um the contract or yeah and then i clarified that yeah just that sentence that they're going to communicate directly with alfred when they want plowing yeah Thank you, Katie. I think that's, I think that's pretty much it. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve? Oh, yeah, no, here we go. Here's some more. Meeting. Yeah. Here's some more. I didn't see any changes significant. Oh, wait, maybe there was. Um, we clarified. Oh, this is where, right, where we said what was going up. Yep. There we go. There's the answer to our question from before. The joy of minutes. Yep. All right. I would make a motion that we approve the 14th continued to the, what was it, seven, 19th? 19th, yep. Minutes as with changes as noted. Is there a second? Second. Um, all right. You ready to vote? I mean, uh, Rose, are you there? Sharon, are you ready to vote? Yep. Okay, that's an aye. I'm an aye. Cliff? Aye. I'm here now. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you are. Aye. Okay, thank you. <laughs> what a pain, huh, Rose? This is crazy. It is. Oh, my gosh. Okay, what's terrible? Next, terrible. Batch, next batch is the meeting of December 28th. I don't remember if I looked at those or not. Pull that up on screen. I don't. Oh, I guess I did go through them. Yep, you have some comments in there. Actually, I think you might have had a question in here, or, it might, or maybe it's the next set. So far. It's not. It's a. It's a. Per, and it's an ROW application. 
wherever that Jenkins one was. Hey, Ruby. Here. Yep. Right of way, it's an application. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I changed that one similarly committed rather than mindful because I heard a my committed is stronger and I heard pretty strong language from them. Which is actually good because we sort that was this is the one we circled back at the next week meeting and right and um, and actually amended it so. Yeah, and I sent it to them and they didn't seem to have any problem with it so. Okay. Some minor changes again, it looks like. Yeah. There's something a little more dotting the I's, crossing the T's. Yeah, this is the one where I asked Alfred to make sure he gives us the information. Is that in there? Yeah. And yes. And I yep. tightened it up. Yep. Oh, this, I did have a question. It was right in front of us the night that we were meeting with Judy. And then I could not find the statutory reference for how things get into articles. Does anybody happen to remember what I, I was the one looking at it, so you may not. At that remember, meeting, remember. if you go into the the meeting folder for that meeting, there's a document that Judy provided that uh, were from the informational meeting she attended. Okay. And I think that's what we were looking at. What are we? Yeah. What's what's somebody tell me what the question is? Yeah. So we're citing, we're, we're making, we decided that the select board will approve all articles as permitted under state law. And it seemed, which I remember seeing, and I don't have any question that that's true, but when we're basing an action on something like that, that we actually looked at, we might as well put it in. So any interested citizen can do the same thing. Which date are we on the 28th? Yeah, I think it's H162. Uh, well, that's an H. If you're, talking, if you're looking for the legislation, I think it's H162, but I'd have to look in the folder. <coughs> uh, this was, I don't think it was a new law. It was the, the law as it generally already is that we can actually do that. Um. Are you talking about the law that has to do with you don't have to get all the signatures? Well, because that's, that's, the... that's new. That's only because of COVID. Right. But the, the, what Sharon's talking about is um, somebody introduces something frivolous to include. Yeah, that was that was in the regular statutes. That was something that was in regular statutes. Um, if you guys, if you guys will, I mean, I think we can approve the minutes, and I can. I'd forgotten I put this in there, but that's a that is something we can just add. It doesn't change the substance of the minutes. It's a statutory reference that actually will be helpful to to us and to anybody else looking at them. Okay, yeah, under uh, what I'm talking about with Act 162, the legislature permitted, permitted the legislative body to adopt the Australian ballot system of voting for this year's local election. The vote board must vote to put articles on the Australian ballot. Um, da -da 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 -da. I think 
I don't know if you get the requisite number of signatures in a, in a normal world. You get the right number of signatures and file it with the town clerk. I think. Right. I think. Or the still has authority to not put it on if they don't want to. Exactly, and so it's 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 the or that is the operative or that we were looking at that is the one that we said we're going to actually apply this year and it's in the statutes all the time and i just wanted to find again where it was and it was easy to find that night and then when i went looking for it another time i couldn't find it um but yeah it wasn't act 162 is my memory although if act 162 changed title 10 uh, uh, I don't know if it, wait, no, it, changed, it didn't change. It no, it, changed, no. it was only um, Act 162 was a separate act just for the COVID town meeting issues. Right, which it may it may or may not go in and change. So that so either I would ask that we wait on these, or you guys have, we approve them with the understanding that that I'm going to connect with Katie and fill in that blank. Of what what's the found what's the statutory foundation for what we decided to do? I would be happy to have you get that information, put it in, and then we can approve them at the next regular meeting. Yeah, that would be my preference. Okay. And I don't think I looked at any minutes beyond that. Those. Let me pull up the next Good. We have the minutes from the meeting of January 4th. I don't think I looked at those. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like there's. So let's do them the next time. Yeah, I don't see any comments or yeah. suggested edits in it. So it looks like we need an opportunity to review those. Okay, yeah. oh, good. We got we got some more done though. Thank you. Um you'll note on the agenda that I put some things that um I just don't I don't want to lose track of. Kellogg Hubbard, their dollar amount for their budget request didn't change, so they're gonna come on the 25th just to do their normal check-in that they do every year. Um, Conservation Commission has asked that we appoint Scott Bassage to the Conservation Commission. And then they wanna to talk to us about the Chapin Forest. They're having a problem with having it, which is a town forest, they're having problems having a way for people to park, to have access to the forest, to walk, through it. So they want to talk to us about um, getting a survey done to see if they can come up with a parking area. So that, um, you know, that doesn't have to happen immediately, but if we have time on the 25th, depending on what else we got going on. And they have not heard back from Charlotte Hannah yet about the curb cut. Remember we told them we gave them some directives on what they needed to do and to come back to us when they had met on site. And I haven't heard anything. So it's it's on them to let us know when they're ready. Okay. Just so you guys know, Ruby's looking at all of you. All right, do we have any need to go into executive session to talk about personnel matters. Oh, I'm sorry, Katie. Quick question. We had talked a few meetings ago about the statement in the minutes that always says the board reviewed the invoices and orders were processed for payment. And there was a little bit of discussion about deciding how to perhaps state that and vote on how to state that going forward. Would you want me to just leave it as is or is it okay to change the language as we did that just one meeting where it said which people reviewed them? I mean, I think, I think, it's, I think it's, come in, it's come down to who has time to do it. And that's been me and Cliff 
and rows. I don't know that we need to have um, a decision every time we could just make that the norm, but I don't want to not give anybody else the opportunity to review them that wants to and has time to. Uh, no, I'm fine with that. I think we, I think we, my recollection is that we said that it would say that the board has delegated review and approval to Cliff, Rose, and Denise, and that we would just put that in every time until something changes. Got it. And like I said, if anybody else wants to review them. So do we have some orders to approve? I was going to tell you, Rose, I got a present for you, a New Year's present. Do we have some to approve? Yep, I got them ready for you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Just let me know. I when could you're... come tomorrow. Okay, same time. All right, same I'll place. come tomorrow after work. Okay. Same location, you know where right? Be. Okay. And All you don't right. have to worry Good. about my truck not being there because uh, it's not running right now. So. Oh, you still don't have it fixed? No. Oh. I'm going to have to have it towed in. Oh, no. Pretty much, pretty much ran my uh, my level of expertise, so I got to turn it over to the professionals. Oh, dear. All right. Are we ready to be done tonight? I do have something to go in to discuss in executive session. Okay. Is that a motion, Cliff? And is it a personnel matter? It is. It is on both counts, a okay. motion and a personnel matter. All right, I'll second that. At 857. All right, thank you, Katie. Thanks, Katie. Bye, Orca. Bye, Dave Delcor. Thank you. Bye.